Today we're going to look at techniques to improve your descriptive writing. Uh, and when you're writing to describe, it's important to remember that the reader won't automatically have the same picture in their head as you, as a writer, have in your head. So to help them to visualize a scene, you need to draw it with your words. Uh, so for example, if I was to say I was standing in the empty room, you might think I was standing in this kind of room, which is pleasant and sunny and clean, or this kind of room, which is much more unwelcoming and dark and rather creepy. So when you're writing to describe, you need to use the senses plus literary devices. Now the senses uh, are what you can see, what you can hear, what you can touch, what you can taste, and what you can smell. And the literary devices, literary devices are, uh, are the general terms we use, is the general term we use for things like alliteration, onomatopoeia, metaphor, simile, or personification. So the techniques writers use to help to uh, improve or the effectiveness of their writing, so to make it much more visual and uh, much more enjoyable to read. When you're writing uh, descriptive details, we need to use the senses of sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. But it's also worth remembering that it's not necessary to use every single sense all the time, but combining a few senses will help the scene burst into life. Sight and sound tend to be popular and successful choices. After sight and sound, maybe you could choose one or two of the other ones. Uh, so sight, how things looked. An example of using sight would be the wall crumbled away to reveal a small tunnel winding into the distance. Or the puppy was black with three snow white paws and one floppy white ear. It had a long tail with a white tip. From, this, from these two simple um, descriptions we really do um, begin to experience the type of wall the reader is looking at or the type of puppy they're looking at. Sound, so how things sounded. As I walked into the room, the floorboards creaked. I knocked into a glass, into the table, and the glass vase hit the floor, crash. So we have onomatopoeia coming in here um, to help the description, and we have the floorboards creaking. Um, it's also important now that we have the starting point of sound, we somehow develop that. So what we have now is a development of that description. I will read it through first. So, as I crept into my grandfather's darkened study, the unwelcoming floorboards began to creak. Clumsily, my leg nudged against his antique table, and his precious crystal glass vase started to wobble. A moment later, there was a heart-stopping crash. Splinters, like a thousand shiny spiders, scuttled in all directions across the smooth floor. My heart seemed to explode in my chest while the ticking clock quietly tutted its disapproval at me. Tut, tut, tut. So now we have a development from this to this just using, uh, just stretching um, the senses a little more uh, and also placing in uh, one or two literary devices. Um, we also have a more careful and accurate selection of verbs, so instead of as I walked, we have as I crept. We now have a place, instead of the room, it becomes my grandfather's darkened study. So even a study is um, generally seems unwelcoming in the type of place you shouldn't be in if it's not yours. Uh, the unwelcoming floorboards began to creak, so now we have human um, traits appearing in inanimate objects. Uh, so the floorboards become unwelcoming. I nudged my left, my leg nudged instead of knocked. Um, again, uh, more selective with the verb choices. His antique table instead of uh, the table. Precious crystal glass, just extending, I suppose, the description there. Started to wobble. 
we then we have later we have like a thousand shiny spiders scuttled we have alliteration and also a simile at work here again uh, we have personification uh, with the clock quietly tutting its disapproval as if the clock has a human quality. So that would be uh, an example of developing um, the writing from a starting point that uses one of the senses by, um, by exploring verb choices and also putting in literary uh, techniques. Okay, so now smell, how things smelled. As she walked on, a smell like rotting vegetables filled her nostrils. As I pulled into the driveway, I could tell the hamburgers and steaks were on the grill. So EBI, even better if. Uh, so how would we improve this? Well, I gave um, these sentences to a year eight English group and gave them, um, uh, I think for this one, about five minutes to try to develop um, the starting point given to them, so to extend this writing, uh, and this was an example. Um, so we have the starting point here, as she walked on, a smell like rotting vegetables filled her nostrils. Then we have the development, as she walked cautiously down the dark and creepy alleyway, a smell like rotting vegetables reached her nostrils. Suddenly she heard a shout and stopped dead. Was it the police? She quickly jumped behind a few dustbins, one of the only objects in this alleyway, and the smell got worse as a couple of drunks approached. She covered her nose and mouth with her hand, partly to stop the smell, but also to make her heavy breathing less audible. She could still hear her heart thumping madly against her ribcage. Dot, dot, dot. Um, so I think that's a great example of development. Um, we've got much more atmosphere in this piece now, and the description uh, is much more vivid. And I, as a reader, I can uh, really visualize this and put myself right into that scene. OK, so taste, how things tasted. The soup tasted salty and contained lots of chewy lumps. Again, I, uh, I think I gave the students about two minutes here to just to try to um, improve, develop uh, this starting point. And here we have the starting line and the development. So if I read this, uh, and what's interesting here is that what initially seemed like horrible, disgusting tasting soup actually um, seems quite nice through the changing of the description. So we have the delicious soup. So now we have this adjective here pretty much telling the reader it's delicious. So the delicious soup tasted perfectly salted and contained dozens of beautifully cut chewy lumps and tasted like a beautiful childhood dream. And ta oh, sorry, and tasted like a childhood dream. Uh, so again, quite poetic conversion of this line to something you know much more magical. I'd say you know a, a soup that tastes like a childhood dream. Um, okay, now moving on to touch how things felt. Examples would be there was a sharp crunch under her foot. It felt like the shell of a snail cracking. The rain was hitting me as the f in the face as I ran to the bus. Again, the development is here. We have the rain, like sharp, gleaming daggers, pierced my skin as I sprinted to the gleaming headlights of the bus. So again, much more urgency uh, to get to the bus, and the, the rain itself is much more painful through uh, this simile here, like sharp, gleaming daggers, pierced instead of hit. Um, so again, I think this is a you know, fantastic development of this line. So that's the senses. So once you've done the senses, we need to remember uh, to begin with interesting opening sentences, uh, which is usually a topic sentence that tells what the description is about. Uh, you also need to use exact, vivid words 
to create a picture in the reader's mind uh, and that's mainly in verb choices uh, and the use of adjectives to describe. Uh, also include important details about what you are describing but also focus on the less likely aspects of the scene so it doesn't your writing doesn't become too predictable so for example a seaside don't just describe the predictable parts of the scene the waves and the sky and the sand but also describe the smell of the sun cream or the noise of the distant gulls Okay, so now you, you know to use the senses, you know to add in some literary devices, uh, um, and if you're writing an extended writing task, um, you need to put your paragraphs or the description into a definite order. It just can't be random, there needs to be some, some sort of logical step from one paragraph to the next paragraph. So one technique you could use for ordering the uh, the description is to use spatial order so that this is where things are located in space so that could be if you're describing um, a building it could be from the top to the bottom it could be from left to right or the room from the front to the back or a scene a crowd scene from the front to the back uh, and examples of spatial transition so when you're describing you need to link those descriptions by by using transitional words such as above or alongside or beneath below beyond at the back in front nearby on top of to the left to, to the right under upon so it might be worth pausing the video and just taking note of some of these because these will really help you when you're describing things in spatial order you can also use time order so instead of using space you can use time and time order also known as chronological order are events that are presented in the order that they happen in time so again you could pause the video for some of these useful transitions that would help to link your writing connect your writing um, and when you're when you're writing it is absolutely essential that you're, s you're using paragraphs to divide the writing into sections. Uh, it's a good idea for a paragraph to begin with a topic sentence. Sometimes for variety the topic sentence can be the final sentence in the paragraph. But I'll do a, uh, another slideshow on topic sentences rather than go into too much detail now. So when do you start a new paragraph? The general rule is you start a new paragraph every time something changes and that sounds rather broad and a little bit vague but it's a good rule to keep in your head. Every time something changes in your writing you need to think about starting a new paragraph. So when you start writing about a new place, when you start writing about a different time, when you talk about a new person or describe a new person, each time a new person speaks uh, it's a new line for that line of dialogue. Uh, when you start writing about a new topic or the topic changes, that again would be a new paragraph. Okay, now you're going to think about how to end your description. You're going to end in a way that leaves the reader with something more to think about. Um, uh, a technique you could use is maybe by posing a question to the reader so they don't just finish your description, um, close the book and, and move on to something else. The type of ending that you use depends on the purpose of your writing. So in fiction writing or descriptive writing, when the purpose is usually to entertain, endings may be happy or tragic, or you might have a surprise ending, uh, it may provide a twist. Endings can be circular, which could loop back to the beginning, so readers end where they began or they can leave the reader hanging like a cliffhanger wishing for more. Um, uh, a good point to remember is also to use usually use the past tense when describing uh, and make sure your your tenses don't accidentally change in your writing unless they're changing the tense is changing for a reason. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, a description where the tenses are all over the place. It was a cold evening during the last of the winter months. 
tired and lonely I'm walking home, when at the top of the road I see two headlights, white diamonds in the darkness, staring at me. My blood will be running cold. Now it was clear to me I should have get a taxi right to my door. Um, so there, that's playing around with, with tenses that completely destroy the atmosphere and almost confuse the reader. Um, remember to use the following ingredients to further improve your description, which is sentence variety. So we need to see compound, complex and simple sentences in there. You need to use a range of literary devices, example, alliteration, onomatopoeia, metaphor, simile, personification, and also use a variety of punctuation. Don't just rely on the full stop and the comma. Look at exclamation marks, question marks, the dashes, or the ellipsis, the dot, dot, dot. Okay, so once you've finished writing and you've used the senses, you've added um, your literary devices, the work is structured and it has paragraphs and there's a logical sequence to the paragraphs, you then need to proofread. And when you proofread, you use the cups checking technique. Um, so write cups at the top of your task, then cross each letter out after thoroughly checking through the work. So cups, the C reminds you to check for capital letters. After you finish, cross out the C once you've checked for those capital letters. Next, check for understanding. So that is, does it make sense? If it does make sense, cross out the U. If it doesn't make sense, go back to those sentences and try to make them more coherent. After checking out, after checking through the understanding, cross it out. Continue proofreading, checking for P, punctuation, and S for spelling. Okay, so that was um, an overview on techniques to improve your descriptive writing where you rely on those things. Thank you very much.